what's what's going on over there? We walk out of the grocery store, we come around to the back and these guys are washing our truck. Oh boy. What if they'll change oil and put new tires on? <laughs> what if you just don't give them any tips? The man washed the truck. Okay, so here's the deal. We just came back from spending a month and a half, not a month and a half, a week and a half a in week and a, half. a week and a half in Puerto Penasco, Mexico, which is just uh, south of Arizona, California area. It was our first time there and we came up with some insider tips that we think would be really helpful for you if you've never been there. And here they are. So the first thing is auto insurance, not just any auto insurance, Mexican auto insurance, and you need to have this. It's crucial. We went through a company called Lewis & Lewis. We'll put that information in the show notes, and uh, we printed it out, and that baby stayed in our glove compartment the entire trip. Right. Do you remember how much that cost? Uh, I don't recall. hundred and something? Yeah. No, it was actually more than that, but I'm going to put it in the show notes. For oh, oh, you're going to yeah, put that in there? Absolutely. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we were kind of wondering about it, but when we got there and saw how kind of crazy the driving was in Mexico, we understood it. Right. So we'll talk about that right now. Mm -hmm. One of the things is stop signs. You may or may not see stop signs. And when you do see a stop sign, it may or may not be homemade. And it may or may not be at the level that you're used to. It may be two feet off the ground. It may be eight feet in the air. May or may not be red. It could <laughs> may be full of graffiti, or it may have been made as a, as a high school or a grade school project that they just put up there on the telephone pole. So pay, pay, pay close attention. We're kind of saying this in jest, but make sure you pay close, close attention to stop signs because there are a lot of them. And I just wanted to mention something real quick too, because we're kind of swaying a little bit. And if you see that, it's not us, it's the whole camper because it is windy outside. We're having what, 40 mile per yep. hour gusts right now. So we apologize if, you know, we're kind of shaking. Right, we just did a Zoom uh, for full-time Freedom Week about an hour ago and poor Stuart thought that we were in the bouncy house because we were bouncing <laughs> around so bad and it is rocking and rolling out there. This is when you remember that you left the uh, camera that we need to shoot our next segment in the truck. And it is blowing. It's about f between 40 and 45 mile an hour wind gusts. If you don't know how strong that is, you sit in here and you literally, I was literally getting motion sickness because you're just mm. doing this the entire day, bouncing up and down because you are sitting on a suspension. So I'm gonna go out and get the camera. If you don't see me, the wind's blowing that way, so pick me up in Elgin okay. in about 45 minutes, because I'll, be I'll be laying in a cornfield. Do, do you feel like the more you talk, the more you won't have to go I'm out putting there? it off, yeah. <laughs> but see, is it obvious? There's, it is, there's a break in the wind. Oh, now it's back. Oh. Yeah, see if I would have gone. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't be laughing right now because we were just sitting here talking. So I'm working at my computer and Dave's working at his computer right here where we have our desks, I guess, our, our desk. And uh, every time a big wind gust came up, we'd look at each other. Our eyes would get really big like, is this the time that we're going to be blown? Here he comes. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. You get it? <laughs> and that was not for effect. Trust me. That was tough. All right, let's do it again. Take two. We should talk about internet. Yes, because that was a definite source of frustration. So we had friends who were down there before we got there and uh, they said that it was okay for, you know, sometimes, sometimes it wasn't. So when we got there, they recommended that we get a SIM card, which we did. 
So there are local convenience stores and they're called OXO, O-X-X-O. All you gotta do is run to the store, um, you ask them for a chip card, and I think it was maybe two dollars. Yeah, something, something like, like that. Dollar seventy-five. Mm -hmm. So a chip card, and you can put that right into your phone. Or what we did was we put it into our hotspot, and then you'll go to Telcel.com. So Telcel is their biggest um, cell phone company, and that is the one that you want to get. And you can load it up for hours at a time. So um, we would just go to Telcel.com, choose Internet by time and go ahead and uh, they'll circle the number of the chip card for you. You put that in, you pay for it, and that worked quite well. Mm -hmm. It was we, like 75 cents, right? Oh yeah, 75 Something cents like for two hours. And yeah. so we just loaded it up when we needed it. And then um, they did have internet, like Wi-Fi in the park, but you had to be right by the building. And even then, sometimes it didn't work. Right. So um, our plan for Verizon actually allows for travel into Mexico and Canada. And so I had contacted them prior to our trip and they said, oh yeah, you'll be fine. Dad is fine there. Only problem is it didn't really work very well. Right. So, and we find this any in any park, US or Canada, if they say they have Wi-Fi, don't count on it. Mm -hmm. It's hit and miss. Generally, it, it's not great unless you're standing right next to the office. Yeah. So again, we'll put all of this, the links in the show notes for you guys as well. But uh, we ended up being able to make it work and we even did some zooms. So that worked. That was a really good presentation you just did there. A presentation? That was really good, yeah. Or a presentation? Presentation. Presentation, presentation yeah. yeah. Do you take speech comm in high school? No. Now you might laugh at this. And this is one thing that we kind of found on one of our last days there when we went out to eat and we got to the restaurant and we went in. We had been walking around Puerto Panasco and our hands just felt dirty. It was probably just the salt air yeah. for the most part. And we didn't have hand sanitizer. So one big thing you want to do is always have hand sanitizer with you. Okay. Probably have hand sanitizer with you anywhere. Mm -hmm. But um, down there, the water is not as plentiful. And to use yes. the bathroom, it could cost you $5. And so you want to make sure that you bring uh, hand sanitizer or wipes with you when you go out on the town looking around. I think that's great advice. I think it's a fabulous piece of advice. You always want to be clean. I always want to be clean. <laughs> Another piece of advice that maybe sounds a little um, obvious is to watch where you're walking, but it is very important in Mexico, well, where we were especially, because we found that there were holes just, you know, they would be, they would pop up. And we saw quite a few of these. The other thing was there was um, like razor wire. Another thing you gotta be really careful about is barbed wire and razor wire. It's all over the walls here. And a lot of times it hangs down face level into uh, the walk area. So you have this stuff here, barbed wire and then razor wire. And it's all rusty. So if you get that, you're getting a tetanus shot right away and it hangs down. This is pretty good here, but a lot of times it hangs down right into the sidewalk where you're walking. So you gotta be very, very careful about that. Keep your eyes open and especially at night. You definitely want to be very cautious and watch where you're walking. Can I add something? Absolutely. One thing is when you're on the sidewalks, the streets are fairly skinny. So cars can come right by you. So you have to be incredibly aware. You don't step out into the street without looking. Um, so you always want to kind of be aware of where you are. It seems really obvious, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of uh, traps, I guess. Right. I don't know what you call them, but yeah, there are a lot of obstacles there, a lot more than we are used to. Right. Here. Local gringos not paying attention. Not good. Not true. So <laughs> true. We paid attention. We That's did. why we saw them. That's why we're making this video. <laughs> exactly. I don't see any broken legs here. Nope, no broken legs. We're okay. We're fine. And we want you to be too. All right, this is a funny one. And we showed it in the beginning of the video. Um, we came out of the grocery store, the super lay, and we walked around to the back because we don't, we couldn't find a spot to put our truck. Our, our truck's pretty big. So we couldn't really put it on the side of the supermarket. Uh, so we had to drive it around the back and park it back there. And we came out and two nice gentlemen were washing our truck for us. And so we 
what did what do good YouTubers do? We filmed it and we talked about it and we walked up and I gave them I think six or eight dollars eight dollars I think and wow. talked to them for a little bit. You were generous. They did a good job though. You know they got all yeah. the salt off and everything. Um, but then I later learned that, and I started to see these signs and windows of vehicles. Sin Lavado S I N L A V A D O. They would put these signs in their windows that say no wash. So when you pull up to say a uh, street light, like when we were coming in that we showed in the last video, a gentleman came up and started washing our window, which we needed him to do because it was perfect timing. But, but he asked first. He asked first. Yeah, the, um, the ones at the supermarket or super lay, they didn't ask. They were just literally washing our truck when we walked out. So Right. So you're kind of, what do you do? Yeah. You can't really unwash it, so you you, you give mm -hmm. them a tip, and it wasn't a big deal. Right. Our truck needed washing anyway, but just something to be aware of. We were just happy mm -hmm. because we hardly ever right. wash our truck. Right, and I think you can buy those signs at the same store where they make the stop signs. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you I'm can, sure they you do. can double up. <laughs> so what is it again? Sin, Sin Lovato. Sin Lovato. Okay. Yeah. No wash. Yeah, we should put that on the Do outside of our camper because we never wash it. <laughs> Terrible, just terrible. Just terrible. <laughs> Don't, Don't drink, drink the water. water. All right, let's roll. Welcome to another Healthy Living Tip with Jacqueline. Today, I wanted to talk to you about managing your calories, tracking your calories. It's a really good idea to get a calorie tracking app. I use Carb Manager, and that actually gives me the option of scanning items in. So you can scan the barcode of certain items. They also have pre-programmed calories, let's say if you're having one medium apple. So go ahead, track your calories for a few days. The basics of weight loss are that if you uh, cut out 500 calories per day times seven days, that's 3,500 calories, which equals about a, a pound of weight loss. So start there, track everything. Condiments are huge. You can't even believe how many extra calories those add to your day. Uh, log your water. I always recommend that my clients get between 80 and 100 ounces of water. Do that for a little while and uh, see if you can cut those calories and you can probably lose some weight that way. Otherwise, if you're looking for behavioral support and coaching, contact me. And that's been another Healthy Living Tip with Jacqueline. Wow. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep my cookies down because I literally am, I'm, I feel like I have motion sickness. I feel like I'm in an right. airplane in turbulence for all day. I get it. I mean, we're shaking around, but the other thing is we can't open our windows to get any air in here because right. there's so much debris coming in the windows. So we're like stuck here in this box and it's 85 degrees outside and we're boondocking so we don't, we're not running our air conditioning. I feel like I'm in the movie Cool Hand Luke where you back in the box, where you get punished and they have to sit in the hot box. I never saw it. You and your movies. We <sighs> have so much Again. work to do with you. So Again. much work to do with, with you. Movies. Oh, Alan's back. <laughs> All right. Um, so I just wanted to mention laundry and not that it's like a safety concern or anything not that it's super important but wasn't it amazing oh it my god awesome yeah so as our veers you know every two to three weeks we haul all of our dirty clothes into the laundromat and we have to wash them all and get our quarters out and then we have to dry them all we have to fold them all um and you know it probably takes us i don't know two and a half hours so it takes up a, a good chunk of your day. It does. And then it costs usually at least $20 to, because we go so long, two to three weeks, so yeah. at least $20 to do all of that laundry. Well, we got a tip from somebody that said, hey, they'll, and I know they do this here in the U.S. too, but I think it's a lot more expensive. Yeah. Um, but they said, you know, you can just go down the street, there's a laundromat, and they'll wash everything for you and dry it and fold it, and then you just go pick it up after. So we did that and we had a lot of laundry. We even threw in um, all of our blankets and everything mm -hmm. that we wouldn't normally wash very often. And 
it cost us about four dollars per load for yeah. them to do everything and then they folded everything just perfectly so when we got back home we just like set them in the drawer today we are heading off to do some laundry normally we have to uh, go in and spend you know two three hours maybe two hours at the laundromat to get all our laundry done and here in Puerto Panasco, they have a laundry service where you just drop it off and you come back and it's very cheap. I think it's like 250 a load or something like that. So we're gonna head down there. It's only about five minutes away, drop it off, and then hopefully they get to it today because we leave tomorrow. So if they don't get it done today, then we have to go first thing in the morning before we leave and get our laundry. So we'll see how it goes. talking laundry yeah I'm taking all the nicely folded laundry out of the bags to put away now they smell fresh and they're all folded so perfectly oh, yeah. do you think they use snuggles can you do me a favor once and just say the word snuggles snuggles oh is that fun no no oh. oh, just showing your little underwear oh are those my spiders <laughs> spiders or Superman no. look at them how oh, nicely those are the ones grandma got me look at that fancy Okay, this is one of the most amazing experiences that I have had, whether it be in the US or Mexico. Um, I'm gonna go really fast through the story. We uh, were given some beach chairs and a beach umbrella by our friends Mountain Beaches and they were leaving before us. So they said, here are some chairs because we didn't have beach chairs. Do what you want with them after you're finished with them. Give them away, whatever you wanna do. Mm -hmm. And so we had these and we saw this family of like locals, about seven or eight of them, staying in tents behind our rig in a campsite. And I walked over and I said, do you want these chairs? Nobody sp spoke English. So I think they thought I was trying to sell them the chairs and then I realized what was going on. So I said, no dinero, no money, free, free. You would have thought that they just won the lottery and they were so happy and so, so nice. excited. So I left. And all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and uh, one of the gentlemen the dad is standing outside with four ice cold Tecate light beers and he said for you how nice and I said okay I'll take them thank you because yeah. I wasn't gonna say we don't really want them I'm like of course <laughs> it was a nice gesture you so wanted not, them. I did <laughs> so we received those into our refrigerator we utilized them. pretty soon we utilized them. oh man and pretty soon uh, there was another knock on the door. Oh no, when he gave me the beers, I gave him a CD, a border hookup CD. And then he went back and there was another knock on the door and he said, sign, sign the CD. And so I got the Sharpie out and Jacqueline, Jacqueline was uh, getting ready at this time. Her hair was all wet and so she wasn't really privy to all this. She came out and signed the CD, I signed the CD and then they left yeah. and then they came back and they had a fedora hat, two fedora hats, and I first thought they were giving us the fedora hats, and I'm like, oh man, I have so many hats, but now I have to take the hat. Mm -hmm. And they wanted us to sign the hat, both hats. Mm -hmm. We signed those, and then they turned their little boy around, and he had a white t-shirt, and they were like, signed, signed? So now we're signing the kid's shirt, and Jacqueline's like, so I feel cute. bad that I'm wrecking a perfectly good shirt. Nice shirt. So then they left, it was a nice shirt. And then they left, and they came back again with the entire family. Well, don't forget, what were we listening to the whole time? Yeah, they cranked our CD throughout the park and they listened to it probably six times. It was so nice. They kept playing yeah. it over and over and they said they really liked it. They, you know, they know the universal symbol for yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah. So then they came back again with the entire family yeah. and we did family photos, which is nice. Hopefully mm -hmm. we'll make it onto the Christmas card this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it touched my heart. 
I, I said, uh, the Mexican people are some of the nicest, um, accommodating, mm -hmm. just nice, Sweet. nice people. And uh, now we're all friends on Facebook and it's great. Life's good. I like that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It was oh. nice. She is my, my sister. Okay. Yeah. You are draw uh, autographer draw in the hat. You want to sign the hat? Sure. <laughs> sign a shirt. <laughs> my turn. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I've been there, yep. It is. <laughs> Thank you, you too. See you. Ready to go? I am. Are you excited um, to go back to the US? Uh, it's gonna be an interesting border crossing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sad to leave Mexico. I'll oh. Be Yes. Yeah, I really enjoyed it here. Good, good. Yeah, I have to come back. Well, I think your green card will get you through the border just fine. We'll see. I think we found our new way to do gigs. Stoplights. Stoplight concerts. Stoplight concerts. Look at that. No traffic going across the border. Boy, we got lucky. It is Thursday, though. We're not across yet. <laughs> But there aren't cars in front of us, really, so that's good. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookups. Go RVing and please remember to subscribe and to ding that bell so that we can let all of you know as to when we have more episodes coming out. If you liked what you saw in this video, we'd love it if you gave us a thumbs up and like Dave said, you know, subscribe, that'd be great. And we hope to see you out here. We'll see you out here. Did you guys have fun? Absolutely. Oh, we sure did. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely. thank you for the recommendation. Thanks for coming along. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> yes, it was. So yeah, much fun with you guys. Yeah, we, we, we like you guys a lot. Had you, have, are you nervous in front of a camera? Not at all. No? I could dance. We've done it a few times. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> it's cool. So we came into this place called Choya Town and uh, it is busy. We are here on Easter weekend, so it is crazy busy. Trying to get down on the beach, but the high tide made it so the cars all got backed up and we had to get out of there. So we're gonna hang, hang out here, get a taco, and then head back to the RV park. <laughs> Let's get a couple of those. Coconut? Yeah. <laughs> Two, four, three, four, five? Four, five. Three? Yes, please. Okay. How much? Five dollars, one hundred percent. Jacqueline is feeling a little bit nostalgic being here and uh, noticing that she, they have the same van that she had in high school. Trespassing in Mexico, you know, if you can't do that, what can you do? <laughs> Earl's our uh, tour guide. Mm -hmm. Not sure if he's licensed, but he gets us into some cool spots. Hopefully he can get us out of them too. 